Okay, so this is just a quick video um, about carbon and gold electrodes and platinum electrodes and it's regarding arrays and just single um, screen printed electrodes. So the first thing to say is Zimmer and Peacock, we have um, a whole series of different electrodes. This is platinum. This is a different form of platinum. This one's good for biosensors. This one's very good for organic solvents. We have a gold one. We have a um, carbon one. This one's very good for biosensors. And we have a different type of carbon here, which is very good for organic solvents. So the first thing to note is actually we have an awful lot of, even in carbons, I can see um, two types of carbons, two types of platinum electrodes and a gold electrode. And then we have what we call our value range. These are carbon ones. And what makes them value is actually their size is um, a little, sm well, is smaller. So we can basically make more on one wafer, which then saves on cost. Now to talk about arrays. So an array, really, everything starts off as at a wafer form. So I've sort of shown a square of paper here, but effectively we manufacture in a, um, in a squares like that, and that defines the wafer. Now to go from a, this is a sort of mini little electrode system, whereas this you could describe it as an array. And effectively the difference between these two is, um, Part of the process is we start off with the wafer, we um, thick film print down, we often, at least with the platinum and gold, we'll often work at 850 degrees C, which leads to a very um, pure metal, as opposed to just screen printing at curing at 150 degrees C. Now obviously with carbon you can't do that because carbon loves to become carbon dioxide. But I just want to say what's the difference between a single electrode, and I've got examples of single electrodes here, and arrays, and literally the difference is, is when we manufacture, we then go over it with a laser, and we scribe lines, and those lines then are, allow us to break and singulate the sensors. So for us, as a manufacturer, there's really not a difference between whether we have single electrodes or we have arrays of electrodes because in the end we can, you know, we can just make bigger squares by the way we, we use the laser. So, um, you know, there's, there's not a challenge by going from single electrodes to arrays of electrodes. Now, the question is, well, not the question, but one way of potentially producing an array is is the way we laser scribe. So, you know, you could describe this as an array of carbon electrodes. Um, these ones all have um, different workings, different references and different counters. But of course, you know, by changing the mask, we can end up with a common counter, um, a common reference and several working electrodes. Here, I'm just demonstrating that actually, you can reconstruct electrodes back into Effectively arrays here. I've put it into a electrical connector and That's how I make electrical contact with it If I wanted to do a beaker test and I wanted to use two electrodes. I can actually make an array of it just by using a um, A connector like this effectively I've just put the electrodes In like that together um, next to each other and it's I've reformed the array now you could have just had the array by not actually breaking them in the first place but you know at an R&D phase actually you know you might want a mixture of materials in an array and actually just by taking single electrodes and placing them together in a common connector like this these are two single electrodes you've then reconstructed you know effectively the array so it's a way of making a array from single electrodes. But I think I made it clear that actually we make them in a wafer form and then we, we, we snap everything out in order to make single electrodes. So there's no issue in us producing just arrays and changing the mask. Um, you know, why work with Zimmer and Peacock is, is, you know, is a fair question. Because for Zimmer and Peacock, it's not enough just to make you know, electrodes 
you know that's that's good enough for R and D. But actually, we've we've really got our eye on the slightly bigger picture, which is you know g getting those electrodes into a microfluidic chamber, you know, and that becomes a cartridge, and that becomes a you know a medical grade product. So you know what I'm showing here is I've discussed that in fact you know the start of our manufacturing process really is a wafer wafers are always a raise because it's just you know the way we print them and then we laser scribe it and cut and break them out we intrinsically are making a raise we just then singulate them so often when you look on our websites you know for us and other and people in this space you know they often show these kind of things but really they've started with this so it's not very hard to go from this to the array at a development stage or an R&D stage you can reconstruct the arrays but just by pushing them into these um, into these kind of connectors um, so that's just a kind of you know a view on um, our manufacturing process and a conversation about how we can get arrays and you know Zimmer and Peacock is not we're not limited to just thinking about the um, the electrodes themselves, we're actually thinking about how to get them into microfluidic cartridges that then actually turn them into um, medical diagnostics. Okay, I hope that helps.